Bill, isn't this all moot because you don't, we don't have the neuro-cybernetic right. games on, on the brain master, right? Well, but they're similar. There's games that are similar. Oh, okay. So that's mm -hmm. where you sort of... Yeah. Um, Even the way our Pac-Man responds versus the way their chomper responded, then they matched how often they were eating cookies and stuff. Okay, all the so timing, all the timing matched. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you're not used to it, is it, it, it even if you're going to use uh, Pac-Man and all that, it's probably not going to make a bit of difference to you, right? Probably not. Probably, okay. I mean, does, that, does their experience suggest to them that more delay actually is associated with greater results? I, I think if you ask both of them, they feel that their system is very, very beneficial to their clients, that they got better results with that system than they got with other implementations. So I can't, ar I'm not going to argue with them. Cookie. Yeah, I'm not going to argue with them. They, they have the results to show mm -hmm. that they got great results. Their clients got better. They weren't comfortable with some other pieces of equipment they tried. They wanted something what they were used to. Now they have it, you know. So, alrighty. Um, if, if, go ahead. One last thing. If you select on here, mm -hmm. you're instilling just for this folder. Yes. Does that impact your dampening settings that we talked about earlier? It yes. All of the dampening settings adjust. However, they're not going to adjust for you visually. You're not going to see the change. So you wouldn't want to. No, no, because then it wouldn't be sweet. Anytime you turn it on, though, it's automatically going to go to the to these settings that pertain to this particular sweet spot package. Okay. Whatever else that's in there is defaulted, doesn't get used. Oh, okay. It's ignored. And the reason we don't show you what the numbers are is because then you're on that, that edge of proprietary information mm -hmm. on somebody else's settings. I see. So that's why it's not like that. Okay. okay. And that's why we never sold it as an option. It's just free, because then it's too it's too on the edge. Okay. Are there only certain games that it impacts? So I mean. No, anything that is points related, okay. it would impact. I guess it wouldn't impact like the DVD player. Because the DVD player is not looking at points. It's looking at criteria, but it's not looking at points. Like InnerTube? That's a great question. I don't know. InnerTube is points related, so it, sh it should affect InnerTube. However, InnerTube yeah. never worked on that, so I don't know if yeah. it would make a difference. That's an interesting one. I don't know. Because InnerTube's got its own settings that you adjust. So I don't know how you would mimic that. Or how how hooked in you are to the points right. anyway. I always right. thought it was kind of like an afterthought. Right. Yes and no. Yeah. Um, points counting method. Standard, normal, one counter. You got one person hooked up. Pretty straightforward there. Um, split for two players is literally like a peak performance application where you're going to have two people competing against each other on one 4x4 four four or couples train. Okay so that you could actually have two points counters so you could measure two people individually. Okay. Any questions there? Okay. Auto thresholding options. It's a tricky one. People struggle with this screen, I warn you. Okay. This is the screen that has to do with giving the software program the capability to determine exactly what microvolt level will our thresholds be set at. And how it bases that is the percentages that we're going to put in here. For instance, as we start, we go auto set goes for 60% time over threshold. Remember that definition is always time over threshold. Okay, it's going to come it's going to become important here in a few seconds. When it's auto set goes 60% time over threshold, our goal is to simply meet that criteria 60% of the time. But how often are we not going to meet the criteria? Okay. All righty. So auto set stops for 20% time over threshold. We're going to be where we want to be how often? 
Okay. 80%. Pretty straightforward. Okay. Default is auto threshold. Yes. <laughs> auto set high beta stop. We simply give you a different percentage. So 10% time over threshold. This one's usually like a guard band. We're not as focused on it being hard for the client. We just don't want it to get out of the hand. We don't want it to continue to escalate in microvolts. Okay. If Everybody. it's on ignore, you're not gonna, it's not going to matter on it anyway. Correct. Okay. Right. It's only for what is set as a go or a stop. The only time high beta is going to matter is if it's sl selected as a stop. Why does Demos like it low? Likes it lower than 10? He likes it at 5. And, you know. As a guard band. He simply doesn't, he doesn't want it to be really a, quote, training variable. Yeah. He just wants to make sure that you do not let high beta increase so that anxiety or something else can creep in. Okay. He just, he wants it just to stay at wherever it's happy. It just doesn't, doesn't want it to get larger than where it's normally at. Does that all make sense? We notice auto thresholding is on in this circumstance because again, we were down training theta, we were up training beta, we were down training high beta. A little note, when you're doing Z-score training, auto thresholding is off. We do not auto threshold with Z-scores. Okay, and we'll look at that a little more later. Now, since... Can you turn that off from the Z option or do you have to go here to turn it on? When you pull in a Z-score protocol, it's already off for you. Okay. okay. Auto thresholding being on, the threshold updating, manual. The only time I want the thresholds to update is when I hit the Y key on the keyboard. Not very popular. Some people do use it that way, but not very often. Okay. But the default is manual. No. The default is auto update repeat after pre baseline and after each run. But the second option is auto update once after pre baseline. So we sit there for the baseline, we're in a rested state, there's no feedback. The computer, after that 30 seconds or minute, whatever we have the, uh, the pre baseline set at, will look back over time, say this is where the threshold would, in, would need to be to meet the percentage that we picked that it would have met 60% time over threshold for the go. It would have met 20% time over threshold for the stop. So it sets it there. And then it's like that for the rest of the session if we don't hit the Y key. That's what this third option is, or second option is. So the Z-score is off because the off. It's a completely system. different thresholding system, yeah. And that thresholding system is what? We'll look at it this afternoon. The third option, auto update repeat after pre baseline and after each run, means we're going to again baseline, no feedback, set the thresholds, but we're going to go ahead and chop our session into a number of runs. So we might have 10 two minute runs in a 20 minute session. So every two minutes, every two minutes the computer is going to look back. And, and reset that threshold, reset that threshold, reset that threshold. So if we start getting the hang of it, it keeps making it a little harder, keeps forcing you in a specific direction. If you begin to fatigue over time, it eases up on you a little bit so you don't get frustrated. You're not getting one beep a minute. Okay?